All right. Anyway. So, the Divine Chain. Essentially, the concept is that social classes and the caste system and whatever you want to call it are divinely mandated and that it is the will of the gods that it be this way. And that if you want to rise above your station or interact inappropriately with people below your station, uh, the gods will get pissy. In this setting, that's real. At the very top of the chain are beings known as the Judgments. Oh! <sighs> Recurring nightmares. You've begun to dream of a vast eye. It knows you. You cannot evade its gaze. A black, unsleeping taste. Again and again, you are alone in the black, wide Z. The eye is aware. Okay. So, I'm starting to suffer from nightmares. Neat. Anyway. So, the judgments are what inf create and enforce the laws. And when I say the laws, I mean the laws of nature. Stuff like the speed of light, uh, life and death, pretty much anything that we kind of just assume is the underpinnings of just how things work was penned and enforced by the judgments themselves. So the judgments are not like inscrutable beings. They don't just exist everywhere and nowhere. They're everything and nothing. Da, da, da. No, the judgments are the stars. So the sun itself is one of the judgments and is the judgment that rules over Earth and humanity. The reason why places like the Under Z are so weird is because the judgments light cannot reach there. So the things that enforce the laws of nature cannot reach this space. And so things start to break down a little bit. That's also why going to the surface is so dangerous because the sun brutally enforces its laws. The reason why, okay, so that's the judgments. The thing about the judgments is they're not inscrutable beings. They're not totally un unknown. They're not uh, these divine things that transcend all human understanding. See, the sun the sea setting at first glance looks like cosmic horror, and to some extent it is. But the real truth of the matter is it's not. It's British absurdist uh, bureaucratic dystopian horror, which is like a, quite a mouthful, but it, it's a specific thing. It's kind of like uh, Brazil. It's on that kind of that wavelength. Because the judgments for as incredibly powerful as they are, are just as petty and just as stupid and just as short-sighted and self-serving as humans. The, the horror here isn't, what if there are beings of such immense power that we cannot understand them? The horror is, what if there are creatures of such event, immense power that we can't dream of measuring up to them and they're just like us? Like, the stupid bullshit that we do is the pinnacle of intelligence. There's nothing above us. What we are is what intelligent life looks like. And uh, all you need to do is look around at all this year to realize how fucking terrifying that idea is. So... Beneath the judgments are the couriers. And they're basically these giant space crabs. Ooh, do, 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 gather intelligence. All right. And then leave. Hey, no, I don't want to dock here again. So the couriers basically just take messages from judgments to each other. They write in a language known as correspondence. Uh, and because the correspondence is literally the language of the stars, uh, it is quite a combustible language, and it's kind of dangerous for lesser beings to use the language. And then beneath them are the collectors, who are these giant space bats. And then there's a whole bunch of other things between humans and the, the space bats, but that's 
basically the uh, the lineup there. So the bazaar, the physical location in London, the place where everyone does literally all of their shopping, all legal, legal commerce is done in the bazaar. You can buy and sell anything there from clothing and food to things like secrets and souls. Like that's the power of the bazaar. It gives anything of value, something tangible you can buy and trade. Okay, now real quick before I go any further. Uh, boo, boo, boo. I am going, wait, are these things in my hold? Are they taking up space? They are taking up space. Okay, so I'm gonna toss a Blemigan ashore. Trips over its own tendrils and its eagerness to advance. It heads straight for the governor's house, or perhaps the jungle behind it. Not your problem either way. All right. Uh, I'm going to get a port report. And then I'm going... Let's see here. I'm going to buy as much sapphires. Uh, ten sapphires. Ten sapphires, too few. Okay, that'll do it. There's a reason for that. Anyway... Uh, Adam's Way, Isla Katsuri, okay. Yeah, we'll just cut through the Crying Heights. We don't need to go to the, the Melting House. Anyway, so with what's going on in this particular game, so the sun is a bit of a flirt. Uh, it's had multiple affairs over its existence, and uh, pff, I don't know if sired or mothered is the correct turn of phrase there, but the son has children. Uh, one of those children is Stone, the, the god of the southern continent. Stone is the daughter of our son and the Echo Bazaar. So a star fucked a space crab and gave birth to a mountain. That is a sentence that applies to this setting. I wish I had face cam right now because I just gave a look as I realized what the fuck I was saying. Anyway, so that makes stone half judgment and mountain nomad a quarter judgment. Um, as you can probably tell by the fact that you can beat mountain nomad in this game, with just a regular old boat. Uh, the judgments are not invincible. They are not immortal. They can be killed. They can be overpowered. They are, however, incredibly powerful. Um, so the sun then decided, you know what? I'm tired of this space crab hoe. Uh, I don't want that shit no more. Uh, this other star, I want, I want to have freaky star sex with this other star. And so wrote a bunch of love letters and then had the bazaar deliver those letters because the son's also kind of a dick. Well, the the Echo Bazaar delivered these messages and the other star rejected. Uh, they were not a fan. They did not enjoy it. And they decided, you know what? No, I'm not going to have freaky star sex with the sun. The Echo Bazaar was like, well, shit, shit. The sun is going to get super bummed and it might cry itself to death from being rejected and not getting it's like freaky star sex going on. All right. Ooh. Gonna refuel here. I'm not too worried about supplies because we will be going to uh, Astro Ball. Anyway, um, so the Echo Bazaar was like, okay, I need, I need time. So it made a deal with, oh, hello. Oh, it's the nightmare. Um, the sea is bright as milk, false stars above the black on pitchy bed. Something is watching its gaze unfold unfo to your boat. You are transparent as glass. Go deeper into the nightmare. wants to learn you. Well, let it. You'll learn the eye in turn. Alrighty. 
Beneath you, the eye grows wider. The water begins to warm, to steam. Remove your garments. It may soon be time to swim. Uh, Nightmare Strength is now three. Interesting. Anyway. So, the bazaar made a deal and basically said, hey, I need time to find a way to put this, to let the sun down gently so it doesn't kill itself in grief. And so it went to to one of the dragons who are the enforcers of the, the judgment's will. And I was like, hey, bro, give me time. And the dragon's like, okay, you have seven cities worth of time. So throughout Earth's history, the bazaar finds a city and it's like, hey, make a deal with you. And if they take the deal, the bazaar drags them down to the undersea. And it's always right on top of the previous city. London is the fifth city. And that's all the lore dump for now, because we're back to plot. Okay, so this, if I'm not mistaken, is the City of Mirrors. I forget its real name because I rarely go here because it's not super interesting. Yeah, it's the City of Mirrors. Varchas. Alrighty. The Mirrored City, where light is always the law. Oh, we just learned why that is. The walled city of Varchas is tangled is a tangle of green vines and luminous and fungal flowers, slow blooming around moldering stone. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. A quincux of carved steeple towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough, a rough shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varchas. Two towering coves carved stone lamps throw their light onto angled mirrors and the blue choked guard of oh, the blue cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light the city is a beacon against the tree hushed sprawling darkness of the elder continent in the far distance a vast mountain glimmers uh... the sailors wave you over they're sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirrored chips and stylized snakes made of bone. You're not going in there, the Zaylers gawk at you in unconcealed horror. They take turns trying to tell you the gruesome stories of Varches, which is no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that Varches renders sailors into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that they blind strangers who dare to gaze upon them, gaze too long upon their city secrets. We're just waiting to be paid and we're off, one of the sailors say, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left and I'd like to keep it. Okay. I'm gonna put a blaming on the because fuck these people. The girl watches as the blaming whirls into the darkness. She shakes her head. More of your outland pollution, Thomas? Mahir will see it, I imagine. Do report, report and then fuck this place. So this is another place that has a long quest line attached to it. You can basically foster a revolution here. Uh, it it's a city. It's full of light. It's weird. I don't like it. It's boring. I fucking hate it. Moving on. All right. So now. Let's go to King Eater Castle. Now, glorious dreadnoughts do spawn down here, so I am on my guard. Because I'm pretty... Keyboard now is really not the time to fuck up. Millionaire bats, you're new. Keyboard, keyboard. Oh my god. Oh shit. Keyboard. Oh, they're doing damage. They are doing damage, and my keyboard is fucking up. And this might be a problem. This might be a problem. This might be a problem because they attack fast. 
They go fast, they attack fast. Oh, this is a problem. Okay. Didn't kill us, but it took nearly half our hull. So those things are for real. They are not a joke. That's a sound. Uh, you destroyed the mill near bats. A bat swarm, Madam Doctor. But they are, I assure you, feathered. Blue feathers, Madam Doctor. Tremendous feather. No, Madam Doctor. Not proportionate. Not indeed. I suspect the bat... I suspect the bats of theft, Madam Doctor. No, I have not touched the bottle since last Thursday. No, Madam Doctor. Not the whole. Not the... Uh, scavenge the bat feathers. Okay. Good to know. So. Uh, shit, I'm not familiar with spawns down here. That's new. That's interesting. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What are you? Oh, you're another one of the abysses. Okay. Well, we're not doing that quest. Does that abyss look lighter than the others? Looks lighter than the others. Okay. Well, here we are. On the approach to King Eater's Castle. This place is interesting. The Sea of Statues. a little nervous coming to King Eater Castle for a number of reasons. Not the least of which being the glorious dreadnought spawn here. Uh, King Eater Castle is kind of fucked. I only recently learned what King Eater Castle is. Uh, after I dock here, I'm going to have another bit of spoilers. Echoes stalk through the colonnades. An old veracity lives here, in the far reaches of the Z. The priests are long gone, but sacrifices are still made. Perhaps you have come here to make a sacrifice. Perhaps the sacrifice is you. The sixth witness, a woman in rag stands at the battlements, staring to the east. Oh, hello. An act of burning faith. Which god holds sway here? Storm? Stone? Salt? Perhaps no god that is elsewhere named. But if you feed it, it will calm your mind. Uh... Okay. Lose your mind. Offer your thoughts to the altar. Do not do this. <laughs> Eat your crew. Not all of them will go easily. Do not do this. This will destroy your crew and any human or near-human officers. Their struggle will wound or even kill you. Construct the Fulgent Impeller. So this is the thing that is the best engine in the game. Offer your stories, all of them. What is one more departure among so many? Oh. This may take you elsewhere. At the cost of all your Z stories, choose it only if you are desperate to be somewhere else. I'm going to compile a port report. Everything is horrible. It's not really an appropriate title for a formal port report, is it? Let's find something a little more clinical. Okay. Uh, I forget what the sixth... Oh, it's underwater. Sure. Let's do the sixth witness. Startled by your approach. I'm sorry. I didn't expect anyone else to be here. Sit with me. No, do not look east. I only dare because I know I will see nothing. Like the five before me. It is my first time at Z. We do not get out much, but you. You must have traveled to the far end up here. Tell me your stories. You barely begin before she interrupts. How about... How about the gaunt pole? They say... They, they say there they see the future. If you go, could you ask what the seventh will witness? I happily give my life to prepare the ground, but to know would be the greatest of honors. Okay. Okay. It's all for go. Uh, time for
time for some lore spoilers. If you want to skip it, uh, just jump to this time code in the doodly doo. But salt is a judgment. Salt is the most powerful of the three gods because it is a cut above all of them. Storm is a dragon. It's an enforcer of the judgment laws. Stone is a half judgment offspring. But salt, for all intents and purposes, is a full blown judgment. And King Eater Castle is the hunger of salt. Ooh, shit. Oh shit, it's the Eater of Names. Oh, that's another one of the super bosses over there. Man, I'm just seeing all the super bosses out and about. Yeah, I do not want to fight the Eater of Names with half strength hull. No, 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 no. That thing's pretty tough. Okay. So, the Shellanaut. Oh, I really hope we can buy fuel here. Okay. Shell is big as a wild dream. Waves lap at the slabby sides of the vast turtle shell, bigger than any cathedral. Shellonites loaf on wooden decks around the shell sides, staring sullenly. Lamps hang like decorations at a festival as a festive butcher's window. All around you, the sea is rank with scraps of ancient flesh. Well, first, sell sapphires. I think that's where you're supposed to sell them. Anyway. Oh, you can buy it. Oh, that's actually really, really useful. Okay. So I need a fuck ton of Stygian ivory to construct the... the engine. I can buy Stygian Ivory here, and it's right next to King Eater's castle. That's so useful. Also, shit, I can't buy fuel here. All right, well, let's do stories. Uh, agree to a proud request. Shore leave. Do Monster Hunter. Port report. The limits of meaningful expression. No matter what details you try to record, the stench creeps in around the edges of the senses. The Shelonites, the Shelonites, watchful despite the reek, movement among the miasmic scraps of long abandoned monster carcasses, frequent duels where the stink is thickest. Place smells bad, y'all. All right. Uh, don't want to take on any more quests. Ah, fuck it. Before the flesh, it slithers, a drooling pouring from between rotten teeth. The gaunt pole, where the breathies die, bright flesh, we slither to the thunderstorm. Fresh meat, big one mistake. Ugh. Redolent flesh merchant. Okay. I don't know what the fuck that guy's deal is. Okay. Agree to a proud request. Uh, Deal is struck. If you return from the Shishmander, not because of the danger, but because of the cost of living, still, your guest promises compensation to cover the trip. Safe departure afterwards. How generous. Is she take him space in my hold? No, she's not. Okay. Okay, so this is the Shellanaut. It's this giant shell made from a uh, long dead giant sea turtle and it's where a bunch of monster hunters live okay I'm going to double back yeah I'm going to double back to the Isle of Cats to buy a bunch of fuel then we'll go to Astrovale okay So, back to spoilers. This is a spoiler fill episode. King Eater Castle is the hunger of a judgment. It's literally the desire and the longing made manifest, which is why it has this voracious aura around it. 
Irim was also likely made by salt before it departed for the east. Uh, like I said before, judgments are physical things. They do exist. And salt lives in the east, which is why going east is so dangerous, because you're approaching a... It's actually a star that lives inside the earth. It's... Judgments are weird, y'all. Okay, cool. I didn't run out of fuel before reaching the Isle of Cats. Oh, what spotted me? Some pirates. Fuck. Not worried about them. So. It's the fucking pirate poet again! Alright, well. Compile port report. Buy a whole bunch of fuel because we're going to need it. 25, why not? Alright. Now go deal with this fucking pirate poet, bitch. Hey. The button for docking and the button for battle stations are the same button. So if you go to battle stations too close to shore. All right. Beach. So as I beat the shit out of... Hey, don't shoot at me. That's rude. I shoot at you. You run away like an idiot. And that's how this is supposed to go. See? See, now you're doing it. That's the way you're supposed to go. Okay. Best to get the wreckage. Uh, bo 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 bo. Okay. The legendary clay woman Corsair. She clings tight to her last few scraps of floating debris. Defiant, but defeated, but defiant. You could fish her out again. But she said it herself the last time you crossed paths. She'd have heat. That's where the word you've gone soft. Ah, eh, yeah, fuck it. Technically, a rescue. A lifeboat? Oh, dear, no. Whatever would people say? The pirate poet glares up at you as the life buoy hits the water, but she grabs it regardless. Your message is received, and her look makes it quite clear that for this, there will be a reckoning. The half-glimpsed smirk as she turns away, though, suggests that it is a challenge she's already looking forward to. Ah! All right. So, I'm gonna go to... Oh, right. Uh, I'm gonna sail up through the north of the Gaunt Pole to Astrovale because... Uh, not Gaunt Pole. Uh, Shellanaut. Because one of the coolest fucking areas in the whole goddamn game. So, uh, salt. Several of the locations in this game are made by salt. Irim was, is implied to have been made by salt, though it's not 100% confirmed. Um, Frostvale, the Twin Towers, are the memories of salt, and King Eater Castle was also made by salt. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is now officially the scariest part of the trip for me because I'm very close to sailing east. And if my keyboard decides to fuck up, uh, I might accidentally sail off east and that will be a massive problem. And that is a very powerful Lauren fluke I don't want to fuck with right now. But this... Ah, uh, oh. Nope, 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 on a rope, Lorne Fluke. We are not dealing with you. Oh, god damn it, it's saying words at me. Ow. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh, that was a skull we just passed by. Now, here comes the really cool part. And I apparently missed it. So we're going to double back a little bit. I'm running really low on supplies, but fuck it. I'm, I'm right next to Astroval and Astroval. Oh, there's the Lorne Fluke again. Hi, Lorne Fluke. F kindly fuck off. Yeah, here's the really cool thing. Ooh, 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 I forgot how close to the edge of the map this was. Yeah, look at the fucking size of this thing. There's what I was looking for. So the very first run I ever did where I got this far, 
I was fucking terrified, terrified of the East. Because everyone was hyping it up. And I was sailing, and I hit a fog bank. I was sailing through the fog, and I could see that there was something there, but I couldn't tell what it was. And when it cleared, I was in this thing's skull, and I was like, uh, okay, fuck. Uh, Jesus, fuck, that thing's huge. And I saw that, I'm like, oh my god. But this is very much a case of Lost River and Subnautica, where, like, what you see is absurdly huge. Like, this thing's eye is as big as my ship. So, you, you see this, like, giant fuck-off thing, and it's like, oh my god, if that thing were to show up, I'd be fucking dead. It, it never shows up. There is no monster even remotely close to that size active in the game. It's just that dressing, which is a little disappointing. Because I do love those, like, big harrowing moments of, like, oh my god, what the fuck, how are we going to shows up, you know? All right. Gather supplies. Eight supplies, lost a crew. You fill your stores with breadfruit, sugarcane, coconut, soft-shelled crabs, and plump birds too stupid to know a hungry sailor from a tree. But on the way back to the ship, one of your crew topples over with a groan. She's smiling blissfully. Go on, Captain, she says. I've missed the sun. Her eyes close. Sunlight is perilous to those who have lived in the neath too long. Okay. Do do port port. Alright. Now we head north to the Empire of Hands. So yeah, sunlight is dangerous to sailors. Being away from the laws of nature for too long when they're suddenly reimposed on you can fuck you up. Because when you're down the undersea, as long as you're not exposed to sunlight, you are not subject to the laws of life and death as we know them. I mean, why salt is so goddamn dangerous? Because salt has power down here. Oh, glorious dreadnought. Cool. Those things apparently just spawn around the Empire of Hands. That's good to know. All right. Port st oh. Eyes on the deck. Just ignore that. The Empire of Hands. Drop off the adventurous. All righty. The delightful adventurous leans over the rail of the ship, sniffing the humid air with evident distaste. What a filthy, damp little place. Oh well, we shall endure. The sight of the mayor hobbling up, she straightens. A thin, insincere smile spreads across her face. Ah, you there, my good primitive, she calls, striding down the ramp and clamping his arm tight. Now then, I come in search of the, your first emperor's vault. And for that, I shall be needing a few things. Some of your finest workers and tools and some food. Do you understand me? <laughs> she shakes her head, barely waiting for a response. Foo F O O D food. She repeats. Com Comprinas? Oh dear, I shall I see we shall be here for a while. Listen, I hear your fellows rather like souls. Shall we discuss a little higher Shall we discuss this like higher primates? Barnabas stays to settle up while his mistress negotiates the value of her soul with the mayor. Barnabas removes his mask from what looks like the... Barnabas removes his mask with what looks like to be a silent moment of great relief. Underneath is nothing, just a flat surface where his face should have been. Ah, an unfinished clay man, one of the flawed products of polythyrium that follow their own rules. If only you'd known that before he boarded. Of course, that's why the adventurous never mentioned it. He silently presents you with your agreed fee, dips his head in a polite bow, and lumbers back to his mistress. It appears he it appears she has struck a deer with the mayor. Okay. 
So the delightful adventuress now has come ashore and we will be addressing her little thing next time because that's quite the quite the quest line. <laughs>